what is biblical leprosy? Biblical leprosy is what you're looking at on the screen right now. Just to summarize it in layman's terms, it's a loss of pigmentation. But we're going to back it up with the scriptures. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Exodus 4, 6 Then the Lord said, Put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, the skin was leprous. It had become white as snow. Now wait a minute now. If Moses was already a so-called white man, how could his hand become white as snow? Hmm. But continuing on. Now put it back into your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. And the image I've got on the screen is a perfect, is a perfect example of that. Hey, and you ever noticed in the Exodus movies, they never ever show this. This is supposed to be a miracle of the Most High and the Most High's power. Yet go back and try, go back and try and watch those Exodus movies and see if they put this in there. Why did they leave this out? You know, they showed the snake turning, they showed the staff turning into the snake. They showed the splitting of the Red Sea. It's funny how they left this out, isn't it? Now here's Miriam, Moses' sister, and the account when the Most High struck her with leprosy. Numbers 12, 10. And the cloud departed from off of the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Once again, how can Miriam become white, white as snow, if she was already a so-called white woman? Once again, biblical leprosy is talking about the pigmentation. A loss of melanin. But we're going to get even more scriptures to prove that. Leviticus 13.4 If the bright spot be white in the skin. I'm going to read that again. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh. And the sight be not deeper than the skin. And the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut the priest shall shut him up that have the plague seven days. The Bible is not the white man's book, man. <laughs> Acts thirteen one. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simon, that was called nigger. Yes, that word is pronounced nigger, not niger. Especially once you look it up in the Latin. And you have to understand the meaning of words during certain time periods. The word, all the word nigger is, is describing someone's skin complexion as a, as a dark skinned person. But because of the narrative that has been taught, a lot of so-called black people will think that the nigger is racist and the nigger originated during slavery when the so-called white man made up that name, or made up that word, I should say, to oppress us. The so-called white man did not make up that word nigger. The word nigger goes all the way back, man. <laughs> and I bet a lot of you Bible readers, or supposed Bible readers, didn't did even know that this word was in here. Hey, I'm going to say it again. The Bible is not the white man's book. Acts 21, 37 And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Can thou speak Greek? Are not thou that Egyptian? Which before these days made us an uproar, and lead us out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which I am a Jew of Tarsus, 
Now you see why they cannot let go and they cannot admit that the ancient Egyptians were a dark race of people. Because once you admit that the ancient Egyptians are a dark race of people, you have to automatically admit that the people of the Bible were a dark race of people. Because they always got mistaken for each other, it was hard to tell them apart because there were two different races of dark skinned people. And this is why a lot of you so-called black people think you guys descend from the ancient Egyptians because we look like them. And you don't understand that black is not a race. And there's no such thing as the black race of people, but there is such thing as different races of dark skinned people, different shades of brown. But going back to what I was saying, this is one of the main reasons they cannot let go of Egypt because you have to understand, as I said, once you admit that the original Egyptians were a dark race of people, you have to, you have to admit that the people of the Bible are a dark race of people because they go hand in hand, which is going to lead me into the story of Moses and how he was raised up in Pharaoh's house because he blended in with the Egyptians. Exodus 2 verse 6 And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said her sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And you see, there's a difference between the Hebrews, aka the Israelites, and the Egyptians. Continuing on. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. Now you see, Moses became the adopted son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now you have to ask yourself a question. If Moses was a so-called white man, how could he be raised as an adopted son to Pharaoh's daughter? He would have stuck out like a sore thumb. This is what I tell you, they cannot admit that the, agent, the, the original Egyptians were a dark race of people. Because the people of the Bible and the Egyptians, they go hand in hand. They look like each other. But you see, even the Bible tells you there's a difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites. This is why a lot of you so-called black people have a hard time understanding there are different dark races of people and there's no such thing as the black race. But the ancient Egyptians and the Israelites were two different races of dark-skinned people. Here's another account of the Israelites being mistaken for Egyptians. Now to provide context, this is where the patriarch Jacob died and the children of Israel were mourning him. And it reads, And Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt. And all the house of Joseph and his brethren, and his father's house, only their little ones, and their flocks, and their herds, they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And there came to the fresh, the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond Jordan. And there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation. And he made mourning for his father seven days. Here's the part where we want. And when the inhabitants of the land Land of the Canaanites saw the morning in the floor of Atad. They said, this is a grievous morning to the Egyptians. You see, but it was Joseph and his brethren, aka the Israelites, mourning the death of Jacob, the patriarch. So I'm going to say it once again. This is why they cannot admit that the ancient Egyptians are originally a dark race of people.
Now we're going to get Yahawashai Hamashiach himself, or as he's falsely called, Jesus Christ, and his physical description. Now look at the image, now look at the image that's on your screen right now, and let's see if it matches up with the scripture. This is Revelation 1.14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Pause. Look at the image. Does this man have white woolly hair? If you had to pick out a race of people, what's the race that has predominantly woolly hair? They didn't even get Yahawashai's hair texture correct. But reading on, reading on, as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass now what color is brass brass comes in variant shades of brown all the way from a light brown to a dark brown just like so-called black people but not only that it actually gives you the description of how dark he was let's read on as if they burned in a furnace so Hamashiach Yahawashai, or as he's falsely called Jesus Christ, was a dark skinned man. And the crazy thing is, a lot of you black Christians that may stumble across this, you're still gonna doubt, you're still gonna doubt because you can't let go of your white Jesus man. I can just hear you guys right now. Not my white Jesus. Or colour doesn't matter. Yes, it does. If color doesn't matter, why did they change the image? And as I said, it gives you the physical description of Hamashiach himself. So why didn't they use the physical description of Hamashiach in Revelations 1.14 and draw an image from that if color doesn't matter? So we're going to end this off with the Most High himself. This is Daniel 7, 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit, aka Yahweh, aka the Most High, whose garment was white as snow and the hairs of his head like pure wool. Now once again, what race of people has woolly hair? And don't come over here with your semantics talking about, well, not all black people have woolly hair. I've seen a lot of black people with straight hair. Now all of a, now all of a sudden you want to pick individuals. This is clear as day, man. Hopefully this was an edifying lesson for you brothers and sisters. Giving all praises to the Most High Yahweh and give an acknowledgement to Hamashiach Yahawashai.